Let's make a queen piece using a radial array and a subdivision surface modifier. Download or draw a silhouette of a queen chess piece. Then open Blender and delete everything in the scene. Hit numpad 1 to enter front orthographic view and tap shift A for the add menu. Go to image, then reference, and select your reference image. Go to the image data tab and set it to front for both depth and side. Check only axis aligned so it is only visible when in front view and check opacity, sliding it down pretty far. Back in the viewport, add a cube. Change its dimensions on the item tab to be seven centimeters. Press Control A and apply its new scale. Then tap G followed by Z to move the cube on the Z axis until it rests on the floor plane. Change the transform pivot to 3D cursor. Select the image and tap G to grab it and Z to lock it to the Z axis. Moving the bottom of the reference to the floor plane. Use S to scale it down to match the cube's height. Switch the pivot back to median point. This menu is also available as a pie menu, accessed by tapping period. Go to the scene tab and under units, use metric as the unit system and millimeters as the length. Now delete the cube. Using shift A, add a circle with eight sides and a radius of about 15 millimeters. Over on the items tab, type 365 divided by 16 in its X rotation so that one of the faces is aligned with the front view and apply its rotation. Tab into edit mode, select all geometry and tapping G followed by Z, use grab to move it to the base of the crown. Scale to match the silhouette, extrude this edge loop to the base of the spikes. Add two edge loops with control R and scale them to match the silhouette again. Now select the center face ring and invert selection with control I. Delete these faces. In object mode, Add an empty and rotate it by 45 degrees on its Z axis. Select the mesh object and on the modifier tab, add an array. Make the count 8, uncheck relative, check object, select the empty here, check merge with a distance of 0.1 millimeter and merge first and last copies. In edit mode, add three vertical edge loops with control R. Select the top center vertex and double tap G to slide it. Tapping C will allow it to slide past the end of the edge and to the spike tip. Change the transform pivot to 3D cursor. Select the top row of edges, extrude them, and scale them toward the center on X and Y. Now add a subdivision surface modifier with two levels. This smooths out the mesh too much, so we need to add bevels to keep our edges sharp. Add a bevel modifier with an amount of 0.3, two segments, and a limit method of weight. This will cause the modifier to bevel only the edges we mark for it. Under geometry, change miter outer to arc. This affects how some of the corners are beveled. Move the bevel modifier up in the stack to where it is after the array, but before the subdivision surface modifier. In edit mode, select and mark the edges that should be sharp, both concave and convex. X-ray, toggled with Alt-Z may be helpful in making these selections. Setting mean bevel weight to one marks the edges as a full bevel. Tab out of edit mode, then right click and select shade smooth. We need to apply the array modifier by clicking this dropdown and make sure the loop tools add-on is enabled for these next few steps. Then back in edit mode, we need to fill these triangles with the F key. Once they've all been filled, select this edge ring, fill again, and make sure its edges are marked as full bevel weight. Inset with I until there is a ring where the crown should bulge up. Right click and select circle from loop tools. You may need to adjust this in top down view for a better rotation. Extrude this central face, then bevel it with B, pressing C to constrain the bevel if it goes too far. If at any point you're getting strange deformations in the mesh, Go to the bevel modifier and uncheck clamp overlap. Then select everything and merge by distance to get rid of any vertices that are sharing the same space. Alt click one of these edge loops at a time, right clicking and select circle from loop tools. Back in front view, we can select the lowest edge loop and repeat the process we used when making the pawn, extruding in the Z direction with the E and Z keys and using S to scale to the extreme wide and narrow parts of the silhouette. Then fill in the space between them using Control R to create new edge loops and scale them with S. 
Bevel these rounded parts with Control B. Select the last edge, extrude, and scale inward. Fill this new ring with grid fill by tapping Control F followed by G. As a final step, select the center vertex on the base of the model. Tap Shift S and click Cursor to Selected. Tab out of edit mode, right click, and select Set Origin to 3D Cursor. Now, Alt G will place the model at the world's origin. Now you can name the object as Queen by pressing F2 and delete the reference or move it to a disabled collection. And that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, this has been Carl with BlenderForge. Happy blending.